Everybody. Good morning. It's us this morning. And Jasmine, thank you for leading us into worship today. And it's good to have you back with us in Vail. Um, and it's going to be a good powder day for you this afternoon after services. Yes. I don't know if those of you who are watching with us virtually, I don't know how much you can see out the window, but it's coming down pretty fair right now. And we're going to have a great time in worship this morning, so let's pray as we begin this time together. Heavenly Father, for the blessings of this day. For the opportunity of your people joining together in worship, to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords, to offer ourselves to you as our God and our maker, our Lord and Savior. The prayer of your people is that you will be honored and glorified today through this time. Let all things point to our Redeemer. May the name of Jesus Christ go forth. May we, your people, be strengthened in our walks of faith and our guidance in life. Lead us and guide us in this time that you might be pleased with this time together and that we, your people, might be blessed. Thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to sing one hymn, number three, Holy, Holy, Holy. We'll give this one a shot, and uh, we're going to go ahead and stand while we sing. So. Lead us, Jasmine, please. Thank you. Share the peace of Christ right now. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, the peace of Christ, too. <laughs> so good to have you with us this morning. Yeah, this is Richard and Betty. Jasmine. So we've got the extremes. Jasmine lives in Eastvale. Y'all have been in Egyptian, so we've got the West End, and we've got the East End. And here we are. <laughs> And I'm going to greet those who are watching with us virtually right now. And yeah, I heard you guess that. Oh, oh, you're 
And I want to greet those of you who are watching with us virtually right now. Thank you for sharing your Sunday with us. We're going to have a good time together. And um, looking forward to seeing you in live and in person when you are back in town up here. So thanks again for joining with us this morning. When we have these difficult Sundays like this weather-wise and they happen almost every time of year, the hardest thing to do is to sing. Every now and then we'll get a couple who maybe they're professional singers and there's not a problem with that. But um, I know I'm not much of a singer. Do y'all enjoy singing? Good. I could hear you a little bit uh, as you were singing there, but... There's something about having a lot of voices together that makes singing a little bit more interesting. But um, thank you for sharing your lives and talents and together with us today. Um, we are going to uh, go to our Lord in prayer at this time, and then we'll go into God's Word. We're going to be starting in a series on the book of Colossians. So I haven't done this one in many years, and it's one of the things we were praying about while we were in Mexico. And it was like the Lord said, let's, let's try. Keep a theme going. So we're going to start in Colossians today and work our way through the book of Colossians over the next several months. We may go to a degree, we'll be verse by verse, but not every verse, not every chapter. Um, and it certainly, the last time we did this, it took like nine months, and it's not going to take nine months on this one. I can promise you that. So, But let's pray together this morning and ask the Lord's blessings and look into his words. So, Heavenly Father, again, your people ask for your blessings and presence upon this time together. For it is you, Lord, who is worthy of worship. In the stillness and the quietness of this moment, we would pray that you would take away any distractions or hindrances to our minds, to our hearts, our souls being open to your word and touch this day. We pray that in this time of worship, that your name is magnified throughout the land. And that we, your people, we thank you for the privilege of carrying the good news, the gospel to all people. In this time of worship, we do ask that you keep us mindful of so many who are hurting physically, emotionally, spiritually those who are struggling with illnesses and injuries, families that are feeling attacked and separated from each other. Lord, there is so much tragedy and hurt in our world. and We pray for you as the great physician to bring your healing to each one in need. And Lord, especially spiritually, renew the soul, the spirit, Show us again your glory and your grace. Be magnified through this time today. And let your people give you praise for this time of worship. As you guide us now into the truth of your scripture, we pray that before that you'll let our voices come together. And let your people pray the way that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So as we look in the uh, book of Colossians this morning, I'm, look, I'm very excited about the time here. Um, just jumping right in. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the holy and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ at Colossae, grace and peace to you from God, our Father. And I'm going to stop there. We'll get into the thanksgiving and prayer in just a little bit. Sometimes when we start reading a passage from any book in the Bible, we see something such as this introduction, and maybe we gloss over it a little more quickly than we should. This gives us a little glimpse 
of who is writing and the attitude behind the words that God's inspiring here for Paul and Timothy. And many people believe that Timothy may have been the scribe for these particular books, that Paul is actually dictating them. Uh, maybe his eyesight is not what it was. There's a couple of times in the scriptures we see, you can tell I wrote this. I used very big letters so I could see it. And we're like, okay, maybe his eyes were failing a little bit. Maybe he didn't have the uh, dexterity he once knew. And as he was speaking, Timothy was writing. We see that the, the saints work together, and this is very important. He's going to bring this up over and over again, that he is an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Paul did not choose this role. Timothy did not choose this role. God has chosen Paul and Timothy just as he has chosen each of us and brothers and sisters. And we're writing to the holy and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ at Colossae. Now, Colossae was a city in what, when I was in high school, it was called Asia Minor. And I don't know what they call it right now, but to me, it's still on the map. It's called Asia Minor. Uh, it's kind of that area uh, north of Israel's current day uh, in the area where it could be getting into northern and western uh, Iraq, Iran, uh, up into some of those areas as well. But Colossae was a city of commerce. Most of the New Testament churches were in particular cities uh, that were brought together by the limited roadways that they had back in this time. A main east-west road would go and hit a north-south road, and right in there, there's usually a major city of some type. Colossae was one of those. And what would happen here is, uh, Richard, since you're sitting right here, I'm going to just use your name as the example. Um, when a, a letter was written, this would be the worship place for the church at Colossae, or the church at Vail this morning, as it happens to be. And this letter would come from Paul that Timothy's written, and it would be given to somebody. And Richard, maybe you're it this morning, and it's your job. You get to stand up in front and read this letter for the church. And that was how many people got inspired. They, they heard the word of God coming from Paul and from Peter and from others who had been writing these. And then once they spoke that here, maybe for as many as three or four different weeks, then in your business travel, you're going from Colossae, maybe you're going over to Philippi, we want you to take this letter with you over there. And when you get over there, give them that one. But they've probably got one for us. Bring that back so we can all gather from that. And the body of Christ grew in the first century in just that way. And I know the modern, the youngsters of today would look at this and go, how in the world did they get all of this done without a computer, without a phone? How, how, how does the communication happen? Well, it was written by hand, and it was read out loud. By today's standard, that would be considered slow. In that day and time, it was revolutionary because it's in the hearing of the word. When we hear God's word, his word has powerful effects in the hearts of mankind. Whether it was instantaneously spoken, God resonates there. And here we see this to the holy and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ at Colossae. One of the central ingredients in most introductions uh, to any of the books, Paul always speaks affirmations to God's people quickly. Because it's a very human thing for us to struggle with worthiness, for lack of a better term. But Paul is writing saying to the holy and the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ at Colossae. And maybe we're sitting here thinking, am I really holy? Am I really that faithful? I've struggled. I've got so many struggles going on in my life right now. But yet God sees us this way because he produced holiness and faithfulness in us through Christ. We did not deserve this. We can't merit it, but God sees his holiness because he sees us through the sacrifice of Christ. To the holy and the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ at Colossae, and then he gives a double blessing here, grace and peace to you from God our Father. So as Paul is writing, as he is directing the church, he is letting them know that we are called in holiness, we are called in faithfulness, we are to be blessed with grace and with peace 
And all of this emanates from the heart of God, our Heavenly Father, through Christ Jesus, our Lord. That is his will and his plan for each of us. And as Paul starts this particular book, that's the blessing he passes on to them. And we don't need to skip over that too lightly. On a day when I look around, I told you the old saying already. It's been said, one snowflake scares a, a thousand Presbyterians away from worship. And for those of you who are watching who may not be in Vail right now, there are millions of snowflakes coming down right now. Uh, it, it's kind of a beautiful winter day up here. But I know what that does in a lot of people. It makes travel more difficult. It makes it a little slicker. Uh, all kinds of things go on in our heads and our minds that way. But regardless of the weather or the condition, God is still calling us his holy and faithful people. Yes. He's also offering his grace and peace to us through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Yes. So whether you are at your home, another place in the country, maybe you're one of the families from England or um, Australia who watch with us from time to time, Regardless of where you are, grace and peace to you. We are holy and faithful, not in and of ourselves. That is what God has done for us. Yes. And we struggle with that. I had a great example for this when it happened to me this past week. During the Christmas season, I bought a t-shirt for, it was not a t-shirt. It's a kind of a sweatshirt type piece of clothing for my sister-in-law, Sharla, and maybe y'all seen stuff like this, I got you says, yes, I'm cold. I'm always cold. And then at the bottom it says, me, 24-7. Like it's chapter 24, verse 7, but it really isn't. It's 24-7 around the clock. And when I saw that, I said, I got to get this for Sharla. So I got one of those for her, and it's sitting at home, and I hope to see her this week because we it didn't arrive in time for Christmas, but I'm hoping to give it to her because... It's about 15, 20 degrees colder down in the Denver area right now than it is up here even. Mm -hmm. So maybe it'll help keep her warm a little bit. But I love that shirt that says things like that. But there's a funny thing that happens in this day and time. If you ever order anything online, somebody figures out it was you. And now I get these advertisements for similar things popping up on my screen. And I saw a shirt yesterday and I thought, I, I kind of like this shirt. It's a man's t-shirt and it says, I love Jesus. Mm -hmm. Next line says, but. Then it says, I cuss a little. <laughs> then there's an X over a little and it says, okay, a lot. And it ends with saying, but I still love Jesus. And I saw that shirt and I thought, I kind of like that shirt. Yes, I love Jesus. But I know what my struggles are. I know those areas I come up short. I know those areas that need to be better. I know these areas of spiritual growth. This is why it's so important to hear these words because we all know where we are spiritually. We all know in our relationship with Christ. And the enemy is always trying to tell us where we're failing, where we're falling short. But this and this, this and this. God has imposed his righteousness upon us to the holy and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ at Colossae. No word but. Nothing. Holy and faithful. Grace and peace to you from God our Father. So if you're going to get a t-shirt, get one that says the truth and just lives the truth like that. Now we get into the attitude that we see coming up next in that thanksgiving and prayer. We always give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we've heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all the saints. Beautiful truth right there. One of the first attitudes that we as God's people need to live with and in is that spirit of gratitude. We give thanks. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, as we're praying for you. We give thankfulness because of the relationships we share. We give thanks because God is working in your life. God's working in my life. We give thanks because God's not finished with any of us yet. And he's put us here and we have come to this place together this morning to be an encouragement and a support for each other. We're thankful for these things because we need them. And God offers that. And so we're thankful 
when we pray for you because we've heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all the saints. I love that line. We've heard of your faith. We see, we see how your love is that you have for all the saints. And here's my Bible trivia question. I have to do this one because I did it over in Beaver Creek this morning, but it fits so perfectly here. One of these four words is not printed in the scriptures anywhere. Are you ready for the test? Egg. Frying pan. Saint. God. Only one of those four words does not occur in scripture. And I'm going to say them again. You've got to listen carefully now. Egg. Frying pan. Saint God. And we're all thinking, it's got to be egg or frying pan, but it's not. Neither one of those two. And we know it's not God. Did you notice I left the S off of the word that I just read? The singular word saint is not printed anywhere in scripture. It is always plural. It's always talking about the body of Christ. The love that you have for all the saints, the brothers and the sisters in Colossae, in Philippi, in Vale, in Beaver Creek, around our country, around our world. This shows we have been placed into the family of God by God's design. And that through that, our faith increases, our love increases, and it all comes from a hope that is stored up for us in heaven. We just celebrated, it's hard for me to believe, three weeks ago from right now was Christmas Eve. I said that in Beaver Creek this morning, I'm going, but it seems like it was two months ago when it was Christmas. But three weeks ago was Christmas Eve. And we celebrated the birth, the incarnation of Christ into this world. And we were so happy that the rejoicing was going on. And we lit the Advent candles, which are no longer present with us, but we had one for faith. We had one for hope. We had one for peace. We had one for joy. Um, there's ultimate one for love. There's all, always the Christ candle there. Notice what we see here. We have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all the saints, the faith and love that have sprung from hope. All that is stored up for you in heaven that you have already heard about in the word of truth, the gospel that has come unto you. Every one of the Advent candles is a key focus in God's vocabulary in helping us to become the men and women he wants us to be. Our faith, our love, our hope, all of these aspects. And that faith and love spring from the hope that is stored up you in, for you in heaven that you have already heard about the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you. This becomes our key point for this whole passage today. As we are thankful for God, as we are talking about being holy and faithful, filled with grace and peace, faith and love, all of this has happened because the gospel has come to us. And just three weeks ago, we celebrated the birth of Christ into this world. The incarnation. Christ is the fullness of that gospel. The New Testament churches especially, but even churches today, when the enemy comes after us, always attacks at the very core of who and what the gospel is. And it is nothing short of the fullness of Godhead being in the person of Christ Jesus our Lord. There is no compromise on that, and that is why we are here today, because of what Christ has done for us. Yes. The gospel that has come to you. If we read the entirety of the New Testament, we would see that there were always false teachers and false prophets looking to come in and add to or take away from the gospel of Christ. The same thing is true today. Adding to or taking away, limiting, setting up mankind's parameters to make it seem or appear different or better. But nothing can change the core eternal plan of God sending his son into this world to die for us. That is the gospel. That is the source of our hope. That is the faith and love that spring from that hope. That is the grace and peace that we look to live in. It's found in the gospel of Christ. 
on our Christmas Eve service, I have, I have a tradition. Have you ever been to one of our Christmas Eve services? Jasmine, you haven't been to one of our Christmas. Maybe this year will be your year. Maybe. Just don't go to Peru in December, okay? <laughs> um, but one of the traditions started years ago, I like to read the story written by Paul Harvey called The Man and the Birds. Have you heard the bird story? You're going to hear it today. Jasmine heard it again this morning. She'll hear it one more time. Many of you have heard this because I do this every year on Christmas Eve, except for one year. Uh, there was a family in our church, and they, they did not care for the bird story for some reason. And they asked me, says, Tim, can you change that? We've heard it for the past five years. Can you please change the bird story? And I'm like, well, I can't really change it. I'll do something different. So we did. Between Beaver Creek and Vale, after the service, as people are going out and we're saying Merry Christmas to each other, thanks for coming out, over 100 people at Beaver Creek and over 100 people here at Vale go, where are the birds? We come here to hear the bird story every year on Christmas Eve, and where is the story? I said, well, this year we didn't just, will you do it next year? So yes, it's there, it's always there now. Uh, I'm gonna, that's my, my, it's gonna be my new t-shirt. Yes, I'm going to tell the bird story. I always tell the bird story. Um, because it's a beautiful story. It's the story of Christmas Eve. The man in the story is a good man. He's a good dad. He's a good husband, a good father. He just didn't believe the story of Christ. And on Christmas Eve, his wife and children were going to church and he would tell them, you go to church, I would be a hypocrite. I don't believe that story. I'll be, wait up for you. You go to church, we'll come back and celebrate when you get home. Not long after the family left to go to church, the snow began to fall and the winds began to pick up. The man was sitting, reading his newspaper, sipping some hot chocolate, and he began to hear some sounds and he didn't know what they were. So he ran to their front picture window and he looked outside and he thought some kids may be throwing snowballs, but it was that there was a flock of birds outside and the storm was getting more and more intense and the snow was falling and they could see the light through the windows and the birds were flying into the glass trying to get inside and get out of the storm. And the man thought, those poor little creatures are going to die. They can't survive this storm. I've got to help them. So he put on his coat, he put on his boots, he went down to the barn, he opened the barn doors wired, turned all the lights on in the barn because he knew the birds would see the light and go in there and they would be protected from the storm. But the birds kept flying into the picture window. They wouldn't leave. So then he thought, I've got I've to take them, I've got to lead them there. So he goes into the kitchen and gets a loaf of bread and makes a, a trail of breadcrumbs from the window all the way down to the barn. They'll start eating, they'll follow, they'll get closer and then they'll go in the barn and they'll be safe. They didn't even eat any of it. They just kept flying into the window because the storm had made them fearful and they were trying to get in and, and save their lives, but it didn't work. So then the, the man was like, what do I do now? So he began to shoo the birds and try to brush them away and make them fly, but they would often go up and just come right down behind him so he could get into the window and look. And then the, it hit him. He goes, the problem, the whole problem with this, these birds are afraid of me. Because to them, I'm a, a strange and large creature and doesn't look like them. But I really want them to know that safety is just down there in the barn. I've opened the door. I've turned on the lights. I've done food. But they're still afraid of me. But for me to convince them to go into the barn, I would have to become a bird and fly with them and be with them. And then they would hear my words and they would know the place to safety. And as the story says, he repeated that, he goes, but I would have to become a bird. At that moment, the church bells began to ring out. And the man sank to his knees in the snow because it dawned on him that God had turned on the lights to the barn. He had opened the doors to safety. He had sent the prophets. He had given bread. He had tried everything to bring safety. But for him to really show the birds, 
to really show mankind. The fullness of the gospel resided in the person of Christ. The newborn king. We have seen the fullness of God in the person of Christ. And he dwelt among us. How many times in scripture do we see this phrase that comes up over and over again? Do not be afraid. Peace of the Lord to you. Do not be afraid. Do not be fearful. We in our limitations have a healthy respect and fear of God himself. And yet God, to show us the way, became like us in physical form. So we can say the gospel has come to us in the person of Christ. And we don't change that one bit. Ever. This is the truth and this is the foundation of who we are and what we do. Regardless of where we live, this is the truth right here. The gospel, the fullness of Christ. This is our hope for salvation. This is our faith and love that spring in our lives to be a minister and be ministered to our families and communities. This is where uh, being holy and faithful come from, is that personal relationship with Christ. And this is what Paul is writing to the early church to tell them. This is where the enemy will come to attack. Don't listen to that. The gospel is found in the person of Christ. That's one of the things I like about the book of Colossians. We're going to see great things talking about the cross of Christ over the next several months leading us into Easter. It's unchanging. It's eternal. It's God's plan from before the creation of the world. And it's come into being through Christ himself. And we have yet one more thing we can say we're thankful about. God has blessed us in Christ. We offer thanks to God, our Father, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray for you because we've heard about your faith and your love that you have for all the saints and our working together. The faith and love that spring up from hope that is stored in you in heaven, which you have already heard the word of truth and are living in the gospel that has come unto you. And Paul says once again, I am an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. He is the author. He is the one who makes salvation possible. He is God. We are not. And I am so thankful for who God is and all that he has done for us. And that's something we can truly hold on to through all the days ahead. We'll get further in Colossians next week. But thank you for sharing your morning with us as we looked in Colossians today. And I pray that this word speaks to our heart right where we are. And we live in that truth of the gospel of Christ. Pray with me this morning. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for orchestrating in the fullness of time your son coming into this world in the form of a man. Your design, your plan. So that we might see you and believe you and accept you. Thank you for a heart filled with love that did whatever was necessary to call mankind back to yourself. You are worthy of praise. Bless your people with the truth of the gospel. Send us into this world that we might share your good news and that others would see you through this. Bless each one present, those watching with us. May honor and glory go to you. And may the name of Jesus Christ be praised. We ask this blessing upon all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And I want to thank you again for being with us this morning. Um, one little quick news. If you're parked over here, normally after the service we need to get our cars out of here. But Presbyterians, we have a great blessing. There's not another service here until 3.30 today. 
So if you want to go in town and eat a little bit or walk around some, you can do that. You don't have to move your car. Just ask to be gone by 3 o'clock so the next group coming in will have a place to park. So those of you who aren't here with us today, you missed that blessing. There's about six spots left out there. And um, we'll try to save one for you when you do show up. Looking forward to seeing you when you're in Vail. Thanks for worshiping with us today. What a beautiful way to get us going in this new year. Always thanking God the Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when we pray for you because we hear of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that each one of you has for every one of God's people. Thank you for being a loving congregation. Go now in the peace of Christ, and we'll see you soon. Blessings to you.